G'day and welcome to today's Bottom Up Boats Soft Shackle demonstration where we show you how to create a shackle that is 230% stronger than a single thread of your rope with the simplest ever overhand knot to finish it off. In today's video we'll be using some 4 mil core, our de-splicer, a splicing pick and our standard fit. If you need any of this equipment, we've got some links in the description so you can pick it up. And the end result will be a soft shackle of approximately 10 centimeters in length using one meter of four mil core. You can extend the length of the soft shackle by one centimeter for every two additional centimeters of line. You want to start by laying your line out flat on a table with three bites in the rope. You then want to make two marks at the end where the two bites are, which will be the end points of two Brummel splices. The tail of the Brummel splice will go into the main line and has two purposes. It will increase the size of the knot as well as giving us four strands at the key point of the soft shackle. To make your first Brummel, you want to put your de-splicer through about two rope diameters from your mark. Pulling the tail through the main line. You want to end up with a fairly small loop at the top of your Brummel splice, just enough for four strands of the rope to go through. Then finish the locking splice by pulling the main line through just below where you have first pulled the tail through the main line. With the splice now locked off, the final step in the process is to pull the tail back through the main line and taper it off. To do this, you want to take your D splicer about seven or eight centimeters past where the tail runs to on the main line and then feed it all the way up to the very end of your locking splice. It's important to get as close to the last crossover point as possible and then you pop your de-splicer out, put the tail back in the top of the de-splicer and then pull it all of the way along and back out at the exit point where you started. To taper the tail you want to pull it through five or six centimeters and then grab two or three strands of the tail, snipping them off. Then work your way up a couple more centimeters, removing a couple more strands and repeat until you get to the top of the tail. Finish off the taper by one last angle cut at the very end and you're then ready to pull the tail back through the main line of the splice. The next step is to create a second Brummel splice on your other mark. We've sped up the creation of this splice, it's exactly the same as the earlier part of the video. The only difference is, is when we pulled the main line through the tail, we used the splicing pick uh, to create a larger hole due to the fact that we had to pull the first loop through the tail. Other than that, creating the second splice is practically identical to the first. Now that you've completed your two splices, just got a couple more steps before moving on to the knot. 
First one is to put your pick through the end of your two splices and to apply some pressure to ensure that the stretch is taken out of the splices. You then want to take your marker pen and mark the top point of the shackle so that we can put in the locking loop. The locking loop is completed by pulling the line through on itself and you want to only have a couple of diameters of the rope for the size of the eye. Using our FID we take one of the Brummel splices and pull it through the line to create the locking loop. You then finish it off by putting the splicing pick through the two splices and normalizing the shackle by pulling it tight. The final step is to create your knot. In this case, we're going to use an overhand knot that ends up about here that is finished off with the Brummel loops. It's important when creating the overhand knot to make sure that the lines stay parallel with no twists. Take the ends and bring them up through the loop that you've created, pulling the knot tight and getting it as close to the end of the splice as possible. Just working the knot forward, ensuring that the lengths of the two parts of the shackle are equal. And as we said earlier, that there's no twists in the lines over the top of each other. To finish off the knot, then going to take our FID and place it through the two loops of the Brummel locking splices at the end of the knot. Take the top end of the shackle and then feed it through the two Brummel eyes. All that's then left to do is to tighten the knot by pulling initially on the two strands together, once again ensuring that there's no twists and the lines remain parallel as you tighten them. As you get it then tightened up, you can then pull on them separately, putting as much pressure as possible on the knot. It will tighten up more under load, but this shackle is now ready to go. And the reason we get our strength is right here we have the four lengths of line, the two outer ones and then the two tails which were threaded through the Brommels. It is this four lines that gives the shackle the ability to be 230% stronger than the individual breaking strain of a single thread of the rope that you used in the shackle. To take the shackle from the open position to closed, open up the top loop, place it over the top of our soft shackle knot, and then equalize the lines, ensuring once again there's no twists. And as it gets put under load, this will tighten on itself. I hope you enjoyed today's video where we showed you how to dye a stronger soft shackle with the base components of the Brummel locking splice and the overhand knot, making it a much simpler soft shackle than fiddling around with a complicated button and diamond knots. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all of our future content.